Welcome once again, PFL Fight fans, to Atlanta, Georgia. Home for three straight weeks of regular season action. Tonight, the featherweights and the light heavyweights take center stage. You saw Brendan Lochnay, and there's Jesus Pinedo. That is our main event tonight. We'll talk more about it in just a moment. And the killer is back, Moblid Haibulayev. Watch for the flying knees. And watch for the squeezing power of that Norwegian powerhouse, Martin Hamlet. There's Alexei Pergande, rising prospect, part of the showcase bout to open the action tonight. Tombstone Taylor Johnson gets his first crack at points and a spot in the light heavyweight standings. And Impaka Sunganai, he finds ways to focus himself pre-fight that not a lot of other people do. He's juggling back there. Welcome to the PFL Pre-Fight Show. Featherweights and light heavyweights. We're at OTE Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. And let's take a look at our main card still to come on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. Lock Nain Pinedo in the main event. Moblid High will have Tyler Diamond in the co-main. Some light heavyweight and featherweight features leading into it. And you can see some big time favorites in the red corner tonight. We'll start the action right here on ESPN. Plus, this is the early card. Two showcase bouts to open things up, and then we get right to regular season action in the light heavyweight division, where Andrew Sanchez is one of only two blue corner favorites on the card tonight. He's minus 195 against Tombstone Taylor Johnson. And the still undefeated Gabriel Braga, a minus 200 favorite over Marlon Marais in a feature bout. Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, Randy Couture, happy to be here in Atlanta once again. And Randy, this is the toughest test in mixed martial arts. Second half of the regular season tonight for the featherweights and the light heavyweights, but it's just one step in a very long journey. Absolutely, so you wanna be a world champion in the PFL, guess what? You're stepping up to fight four times in seven months. You're gonna turn around every week Manage those injuries, manage those bruises, and get right back out there to fight again if you have any hope of getting into that championship and winning that million dollar purse and that shiny nice belt. It is the toughest thing in the toughest sport in the world right now. The Professional Fighters League regular season. Well, the regular season is tough enough. And you can see how difficult it is just to win one mixed martial arts fight. If you get out of the regular season, you're gonna need points and there are people coming into their fights tonight and for the next couple of weeks with zero points. Kenny, that means they need finishes. Yeah, absolutely. It's not about popularity. It's not about social media, how many views you get. It's not even about wins. You need points. It's the way that you win, the matter in which you win really counts out there. You need as many points as possible. A lot is on the line. We started with 60 fighters. We now have 24 that will go on to the playoffs. Here are the featherweight standings. We started with 10. Only four will make it. You see right there those guys with points, but a lot can change in one night, guys. So Brendan Lochnane right now alone at the top of the table. He got a second round TK over, over Marlon Marais. That's good enough for five points. And you see only decision victories, three points underneath him. Brendan Lochnane is one half of our main event tonight. Randy, he's the 2022 champ, and I think he's still getting better. He is on fire. He wants to repeat. He wants to establish his legacy. Here's a guy who lost. He got smothered in the semis by Mowgli Haibalaya, the eventual champ that season. He went out and found those same Dagestanis and Mowgli to sharpen up his wrestling. Here he is against a world-class wrestler, a national champion from Arizona State in Bubba Jenkins to win the title in 2022. This guy's a very well-rounded fighter. Slick striker, his kicking is on point. His footwork, his angles, long, rangy, and he's got great wrestling skills to boot. So he's gonna be tough for anybody to beat operating with the confidence he has right now. So a lot of confidence and a comfortable position with those five points for Brendan Lochnane. On the opposite side of the smart cage tonight is Jesus Pinedo. He doesn't have any of that going for him right now, which sets up that scenario I was talking about, desperate for points. Yeah, absolutely. Be, care be careful with the desperate fighter out there. Pinedo is just that. He understands he needs points. He had a very close fight against a very tough and undefeated Brazilian fighter in Gabriel Braga. It was a fight where a lot of people felt it could have gone either way. I was really impressed with his volume, his pressure, how strong he finished that fight. And he's coming in here very confident. He's also one of the few fighters who's going to have a height and reach advantage over the champ, Brendan Lochnane. Very tough task in front of Jesus Pinedo tonight. Brendan Lochnane, as I mentioned, is the 2022 champ. 
he is fully invested on continuing to improve and bringing home another title here in 2023. And for more on Brendan Lock name, we welcome the fourth man on the broadcast team tonight, the outlaw Dan Hardy. We brought him from across the pond. Dan, what do you got? Thanks, Sean. Of course, this is not Brendan's first rodeo. He knows the PFL format. He knows this league is so challenging. And in order to improve his chances, he's got to live the fighter lifestyle. That's why he's gravitated to Thailand. He was telling me about this street, fighter street, six major gyms, health food shops, recovery centers, everything that a professional fighter needs. But you've got to think this street is attracting the best fighters from around the world. So Brendan is crafting himself every day, physically, psychologically, to prepare himself for the toughest test in mixed martial arts. And he's decided that the best place to do that, to keep supremely focused, is to be out in Thailand, which is a very much a fighting culture and offers a lifestyle that's not found anywhere else in the world. And Brendan is making the most of it. Back to you guys. He is all the way bought in. And for more on one of the best featherweights on the entire planet, take a look at this. It's a dream come true for me, it really is, starting in the showcase bout. Up and down, Wagey goes. Fighting Mov lead in the semis, losing. It's returned by Hybalaya. In the final few seconds, wow. oh! Coming back, going for it again. Lock name maybe 10 seconds away from a championship. And then to finally get it in the end, dream come true. He lands in the end, that's it! Brendan Lockdown, 2022 PFL featherweight champion. But the story's not written. I'm here again. Legacy time now. It's time to get it again. Brendan Lockdown is on a tear right now. There are no fighters on the roster or anywhere in the world that are more willing to put in the work than Brendan Lockdown. He works harder than anybody. Both legs are in big trouble here for Marlon Marais. Oh, Lockmane kicks the legs out from under. And Lockmane's going to make him stand back up. 20 seconds remain. Brendan Lockmane won't be happy unless he's completely dominant in the smart game. He has the confidence from 2022 with the intensity to do it all over again. That just chopped his leg off. I believe now the best is yet to come from Brendan Lockmane. I really do. I am coming back for my belt. I am already the champion. It hurts me just to watch those highlights Brutal. from Marlon Rice's legs getting chopped out from underneath them. All right, before we move on from this main event matchup, I want to know how we should be betting it because there's a big number next to Brendan Lochnane's name here. We bring in the experts for that. Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker are the best in the business. Take it away, fellas. And Sean, it hurts me to see the odds that Brendan Lockdane has now. But here's the thing. You heard him say the story is not written. And Ian Parker, the story has changed. He's now no longer the hunter. He's now the hunted. He's the only featherweight that got bonus points in his first fight. But let's look at the last five fights. Win, win, win. The last two by TKO. He's starting to change the game in a great way. But Ian, he's north of minus 600 to win tonight. Bring that down with the big board. Happy to do so, Coach. Let's take a look at our props here. You know, Brendan Locke need to think about him as well, being in the PFL as long as he has. He's been through the format. He's been through the seasons. And what he did that first time out was cementing that number one seed. Now it's winning get in. He does not have to force it. He's got to stay healthy. I think he's going to get this done by decision. Now, if you do want to play a round three finish, potentially, if those leg kicks land, I get it. For me, he jams his way to victory. Let's get by decision at minus 150. Yeah, he's very, very, very smart. High fighter IQ. As you said, all he has to do, Sean O'Connell, is just win, and he guarantees himself a spot in the playoffs coming up in August. A lot more to come here on the pre-fight show. We've got not one. I know you love him, Sean O'Connell. Not one, but two Parker parlays. Two? I I'd like three if we could get three <laughs> Parker parlays. Give me four. All right, let's take a look at the featherweight standings. For now, Brendan Lochnane, five points. He's alone at the top. Bubba Jenkins, Moblid Haibulayev, Gabriel Braga, all coming off of decision victories. They've got three points apiece, and of course, matchups tonight where they can earn more points. Let's talk about the co main event because Moblid Haibulayev is not a name I am willing to ignore. He's the 2021 champ. The only thing that took him out of 2022 was an injury. 
and a surgery. Now he's back. He says, this division is mine. Is he right? Uh, he could very well be right. He's got a lot of skills. You know, everybody knows him for his takedown ability, his ability to drown you on the floor, his ground and pound. I tell you what, he could absolutely get it done on the feet as well. You see that devastating flying knee knockout against Damon Jackson, and that was a move that him and his team had analyzed. He saw there was a pattern in what Jackson was doing. So this is a guy who knows how to do his research and knows how to execute as well. This is such an amazing season because this guy is back and potentially on a collision course against Lochnick. I wouldn't hate to see that Ooh. fight again, but we've got a stellar matchup for Movlid Haibulayev tonight. Tyler Diamond has one opportunity to earn himself points, and he feels like he's up to the task. Yeah, Tyler Diamond is a game fighter, well-rounded. He's got a great wrestling pedigree, and he's going to need that wrestling pedigree to shut Movlid Haibulayev down. He's got a gas tank for days. He's willing to get in your face and stay there for the entire fight as long as it needs to be there. This guy's very, very well-rounded, and he's confident coming in this. He has nothing to lose. He says he's fought the best the PFL has, and he looks forward to fighting Mobleed Haibalayev. That's one of the best in the PFL also. Quite frankly, it's a strange thing to look forward to. But Tyler <laughs> Diamond is just that kind of guy. For more on the matchup, take a look. Ну, я, как всегда, так и говорю, для меня важна победа. У меня был перерыв, после такого перерыва нормально. There's a reason why they show his Damon Jackson highlight over and over and over again. There is no other highlights of him doing that. I think he plays it safe, doing just enough to win the rounds. Man, what toughness oh. there from Tyler Diamond, and he turns it into a takedown. All I fight is champions. I fought Brendan, now I'm fighting Mobley. I think I have all the skills it takes to beat a guy like him. Big right hand. Так что я готов, я тренируюсь с лучшими. Отметил бы такой, что флагмейт я выиграл тут всех чемпионов. И я сам тоже был чемпионом. Так что они должны знать, кто здесь настоящий чемпион. Can't wait for that one. That is the co-main event. But it's not all about the featherweights tonight. Everyone's favorite weight class, the light heavyweights, also <laughs> featured on the card tonight. And there's a look at the light heavyweight standings for now. Martin Hamlet and Josh Severa, both with quick first round submission victories when we were in Las Vegas for the first half of the regular season. They've got six points apiece. And Ty Flores, decision victory, he's got three points. Everybody else chasing a finish and a spot in these playoffs tonight. So two guys in a really solid position. Let's talk about the number one seed. Coming out of tonight, we will know who the number one seed in the playoff is. Randy, do you think Martin Hamlet can pull it off? I think he can make a case for Martin Hamlet. Here's an Olympic caliber Greco-Roman wrestler, and that's the style of wrestling that translates best to fighting. You see him struggle a little bit with figuring out how to implement his wrestling abilities and those wrestling positions into his fighting style. We've seen him be a little frivolous with some of his energy. He looks to have dialed all these things in now and is really coming into his own. He's strong. We've seen him get submissions from places we don't usually see submissions. This is a well-rounded guy who I think has dialed it all in and is ready to take the number one spot. Let's talk about the other guy coming in tonight with six points. Of course, Josh Silvera, as we just looked at the standings, can he emerge as the number one seed? I think he can. You know, he gained so much valuable experience last year. He said he's all in now on the PFL. He's ready for the big show. He, he's learned a lot about his training, how to pace himself during a fight. Had a great start this year. And I think he's going to build off of that momentum. He likes this matchup against a very dangerous Delon Monte. But he knows if he takes this to the floor, he can get the finish. All right, so potential number one spot contenders right there in Martin Hamlet and Josh Silvera. Those men are both on our main card coming up on ESPN. And for more on how we're betting the whole main card, I was promised a parlay. I expect you to deliver, fellas. Jonathan Coachman, Ian Parker, what do we have? I am nothing if not a man of my word. Kenny just said, I'm all in. Well, guess what? I'm all in on the main card as well. So, Ian, we've got some numbers that... I just don't like. So I'm going to throw them out the window, and I'm going to task you with not only a parlay, but I know that when you handicap, you also look for little props that you like to play to kind of educate the audience and maybe a couple extra sprinkles. Start us off. 
You're getting Sean really excited, Coach. I hope I can keep up with all this passion. Let's start off with Brendan Locke named as the first leg at minus 660, but pay attention as the odds come down. Now, this parlay is going to be chalky. I just don't see any of the favorites losing. So let's go on to Mobit Habulayev. He is fighting someone in Tyler Diamond who is durable, a really good wrestler. But in that interview, Mobit Habulayev says, I don't care if people like my style. I'm here to win. He's going to be the second leg, but look for him to get it done by decision at minus 150. Moving on, Randy mentioned Martin Hamlet. I agree with Randy. I think he is the one to watch out for. He calls himself the dark horse. He is definitely not anymore. He's going to bulldoze Sam K like he did his last fight. Minus 1250. Not great value in the parlay, but him by submission or round one. You're going to get some great odds there. Moving on to bad man Bubba Jenkins. He just keeps on getting better, but he is fighting someone in Sung Bin who is a very good striker. Very tough. So what's Bubba going to do? Bubba's going to wrestle her. He is a wrestler. He's going to wrestle. Minus 410. That's going to bring our odds down to minus 124. I like Bubba also to get it done by decision. Last but not least, Josh Silvera. He is going to bring that parlay coach to plus 106 on all the favorites. Now, Delon Monte, Kenny mentioned, tough guy, aggressive. He needs a finish to get in. I think Silvera takes him to the ground, and let's do that one by submission. Now, let's go back to the Hamlet fight, because in 2021, 20, he was fantastic. Last year, he stumbled a little bit. So we know tonight, aggression is the name of the game. How fast do you think he's going to get it done? Well, Coach, we're going to go to the betting big board and back to the props. I seem to be really focused on that because with the big favorites, that's how we get our value. Under one and a half at minus 205, I think it's going to get done. I would be shocked if it left the first round. And, Coach, if you want to take it a step further, let's go by submission at minus 135 as well. When I think of Ian Parker and his style when it comes to MMA betting, I think of bold. Which brings us to our bold prediction brought to you by Puncher's Chance. We're going to stay in the same fight again. Dare we cash three tickets in the same fight? Could we do that? Martin Hamlet, don't let me down if you, please, because we got a lot riding on you tonight. I'm going under a half round coach at plus 255. Now for Martin Hamlet, it's win and get in. He's got the six points, but that's just not his style. He is going to do a power double, get this fight to the floor. Don't give Sam K any chance at winning and get that quick finish under a half round plus 255. Let's go. Only here on the pre-show do you hear power double that's what we're all about now sean o'connor we're not ignoring the espn plus card we'll come back in a couple of minutes we got something for that as well back to you not only did he give me a parlay he gave me three bets on one fight that is why ian parker is the best in the business a member of that parlay by the way josh severa one of those guys we were talking about yep. potentially a number one seed i want to know more about him let's take a look Joshua Silvera! Last year's Josh uh, versus this year's Josh. You're gonna see a more mature man, like I said. You're gonna see a guy who's not scared to get tired. A guy who's going to push the limit. I feel the best that I ever did, 30 years old. I'm excited. I'm scared of me right now. Oh, this is where Josh Silvera oh. wants to be now on the back. Sam nice. Hey. Hook hooks in. Ankle oh, tight. There's the tack. Wow. Win points for Josh Silvera with the first round submission. Joshua Silvera.
This is the hardest competition in sport, never mind combat. It was crazy, a crazy experience. This sh was hard as f I think it was a little bit overwhelming for, you know, how quick the pace is for the season. It is demanding, it is grueling, it is one of the toughest tests, but uh, I welcome it. You're gonna make this climb, you know, you climb and you climb, and then you get thrown off the mountain and you have to start over again. Com certeza, é uma das coisas mais difíceis de se fazer. Larissa! Welcome back to the toughest test in mixed martial arts, the Professional Fighters League. We're in the second half of the regular season. This is how the season works. Ten fighters in each weight class, six different weight classes, two regular season fights for each fighter, three points for wins, bonus points for finishes in any round, and then the top four fighters and only the top four fighters from each division make the playoffs. If you can fight to the championship, it comes with a $1 million championship check. Here is our main card still to come. ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. Another look at the odds as they currently stand. Big time numbers. That's why you got to follow Ian Parker's parlay. But we will start the action right here on ESPN Plus with this early card. Two showcase bouts to open things and then right into the regular season action in the light heavyweight division. Taylor Johnson, Andrew Sanchez, Ipa Kasunganai, Tim Perrin. Chris Wade and Rio Jikudo, an elimination bout between those two, Ty Flores, Dan Spun, and Marlon Marias versus Gabriel Braga in a featured contest. Kenny Florin, I want to talk to you about that featured contest. Gabriel Braga is still undefeated. He's young. He's just on the rise in his career. Marlon Marias has been everywhere. He's seen it all. He's done it all. He's accomplished it all in the sport. What do you think of the match? One of my favorite fights of the night. Both these guys are tremendous strikers, but they really are well-rounded and dangerous everywhere. The, the way that they fight, you have a guy in Moraes who's extremely fast, has a lot of different tools, been working a lot on his grappling and his conditioning. And you have Gabriel Braga, who has so many skills on the feet. His father, a former professional fighter out of Brazil, he's got great skills on the ground as well. Both these guys love to move forward. This is a fantastic fight. All right, Randy, you know I'm going to ask you about a light heavyweight bout because, well, former light heavyweight champion of the world, he's a bit of an expert on the 205er. <laughs> Impa Kasunganai, we saw him in the Challenger Series. He won the contract, right? We saw him in a showcase bout. Very impressive. And now here he is with an opportunity to earn points and potentially a spot in the playoffs. He gets a nod for his, his first regular season fight here this evening. And he's a very, very well-rounded fighter. Steps out of the yurt to come here to Atlanta for his very first PFL regular season fight. He's got a ton of skills, great striking, right down the pike, knows how to finish. This is a very, very well-rounded fighter and an interesting story, a young man that's got a lot of skills and a lot on the line. Here he is in a showcase bout against Corey Hendricks, a barn burner of a match. Corey Hendricks is a big veteran in the sport. Sanganai did everything he needed to do to win that fight in a showcase bout. He's going to bring all those skills to bear tonight for his first regular season bout. Really interesting guy, former college football player, and as Randy mentioned, lives the simple life in a yurt in Florida. Very, very interesting, and potentially someone who you could see in the playoffs. This early card, we need some advice on how to bet it, because some of those numbers were not manageable. I'm glad we have our experts, Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker. Dare I say another parlay coming? <laughs> oh, it's coming, John. It's coming. But I just heard you say simple. And our next pick is very, very simple. Ian Parker, you have found a dog, an underdog, that you like. And it happens to be the first league fight of the night. Talk to me. That's right, Coach, and the odds actually have been fluctuating throughout the day. First plus 145, then plus 165, now plus 155. Usually the odds change after I give the pick. So let's go with Taylor Johnson. He carries tremendous power in his hands. Good wrestler, good defense on his takedowns. And he's got good cardio. He's going against someone in Sanchez when he entered MMA, more of a black belt in jiu-jitsu, grappler, but then he kind of fell in love with his hands. His cardio towards rounds two and three tends to fade against Tombstone Johnson. I don't like it. Give me Taylor Johnson at plus 155. Let the dog bark. Oh, rough, rough. Now, 
There are five league fights. There are two showcase fights. So you have seven fights, Ian Parker, that you can choose from for your next Parker's Parlay. Give me eh, three. I will do just that. Let's start off with Chris Wade and Ryoji Kudo. Chris Wade needs a finish early on if he wants to get to the playoffs, along with some help along the way. But he's fighting someone in Kudo. Very durable, very tough. We saw against Lockney, and he's got power in his hands as well. I'm expecting Wade to wrestle. So I am going to go with over two and a half, coach. That's going to be the first leg of the parlay. Getting back to the next leg. Impa Kasangane, you know, the guys talk about him. Good finisher, good skills, well-rounded, simple life. Well, he's simply going to win this fight. And last but not least, we're going to go with Alexei Pergande here. Very solid blue chip prospect, fighting on the less experienced Akeem Bashir. You know, this guy, Pergande, we've seen him in the PFL in a showcase fight, good finishing, very well-rounded, young, trains at Hillcliff. I like him. We are going to get plus 115 on that three-leg parlay with two heavy favorites and an over two and a half in the Wade fight. And if you tune in even eight, ten minutes late, you can't play this parlay. Why? Pergande is the very first fight of the night. So, Sean, we're done. We've laid it all out for everybody. We're going to go hang out at the pay window, and we'll see you throughout the night here. But right now, I'm ready for some fights. Back to you. I love it. I love the picks, all right? A parlay that includes our very first fight, keeping you invested all through the night. And that underdog pick, Tombstone Taylor Johnson, has looked impressive in the past. But I think one of the most important things here is that the light heavyweight division it is wide open. A finish, season up points, and you're in the playoffs. We got fights next on ESPN+. Plus. That man right there, as promised, Alexei Pergande. Ian Parker called him a blue chip prospect, and you know what? I like it. He's recently relocated to fully invest himself, taking on Akeem Bashir, who's the local representation on the card tonight, fighting in his own backyard against the rising prospect. Mixed martial arts action, moments from now on ESPN Plus.